Hello everyone. Welcome to Amma Safety webcast. This is a sixth part of ongoing video series on how to deploy and set up two tier public key infrastructure using Windows Server 2019. In this video, we are going to verify PKI health for the issued certificate using some built-in tools and consoles. Remember, this is a test environment created in VirtualBox so you can have an idea about the configuration steps. Maybe you guys already know the lab setup but let me again remind you. For this demo, we are using two Windows Server 2019 virtual machines. This is our domain controller with the host name ws2k19-dc01. This is the root domain controller for mylab.local domain. Let's click on Saw Manager. And here you can see the computer name is there for another VM. The host name of the server is mylab issuing sub. And this server is also part of our Active Directory domain mylab.local. Until now, on this server, we have already installed and configured Enterprise Subordinate Certificate Authority with CA Web Enrollment Service. And in the last video, we have also set up Online Responder Role Service on this server, which is also working perfectly fine. We have also checked for the health status by using pkiview.msc console which is also known as enterprise pki tool. Now let's discuss why ADCS health check is necessary. It is highly suggested that we should verify our PKI after installation and at regular intervals later on. In particular, we want to determine if clients can access CS certificates and certificate revocation list. Clients need to access the certificate of CA that issue the certificate being verified as well as the certificate that provided the issuing CA with its own certificate. This process establishes a chain of trust and validates the certification path from the certificate being verified to the root CA of the PKI that produced the certificate in question. Might be this sound little bit boring and confusing. Let me show you something. We can see this chain which we are talking about when we open a certificate and look at the certification path tab. So in the last video, we have requested for one certificate for our user account administrator. Let's double click on that certificate. As you can see, this certificate is issued to administrator and issued by mylab-mylab issuing a sub CA. That is our enterprise subordinate certification authority. Now, why our computer is trusting for this certificate? Because this certificate is issued by this CA. So, why our server is trusting on this enterprise subordinate certification authority? Let me show that. Let's click on certification path tab. And you can see we are talking about this certificate, administrator certificate, which is in a question. Now, this certificate is issued by MyLab Enterprise subordinate CA. And a server is trusting on this CA. Why? Because this certificate is issued by offline root CA. And our server is also trusting on this offline root CA. So indirectly, if we talk about administrator certificate, our server is trusting on it because it trusts on subordinate CA. And it is trusting on subordinate CA because that certificate is issued by our offline root CA. Let's click on view certificate that will show the root certificate. Fine, this is issue to offline root CA and issue by offline root CA. Let's click on OK. We have one more certificate here. Let's select my lab issuing sub CA. Let's click on view certificate. And here important thing is that this certificate is issued by our offline root CA to our enterprise subordinate CA. And again, these certificates are also stored somewhere else. And that's the reason why our server is trusting on this certificate and certification authority. Let's click on OK. And let's click on OK. First, let's expand trusted root certification authorities. Let's click on certificates. And here you can verify that offline root CA certificate is there. And that's the reason that our server is trusting on it. Because this certificate is stored under trusted root certification authority. Second, let's expand intermediate certification authorities. Let's click on certificates and here you will find my lab issuing sub CA certificate, which is issued by offline root CA. And this certificate is stored under intermediate certification authorities. And that's the reason 
that why our server is trusting on this certificate. This is known as a chain of trust. Fine. See, you can also verify the same thing by using a certificate from any website, for example, www.google.com or www.msn.com or any other website. Most of the time, they are also using two-tier or three-tier PKI environment. And already, we have used PKI view tool to check health status of our enterprise PKI. But again, I want to show that. Let's go to PKI view console. You can open this console by using command pkiview.msc. Let me again click on enterprise PKI and let's click on refresh button. Let's wait for the status. Fine. As you can see, status is okay. Let's expand our root CA and let's click on our subordinate CA. Everything is working fine under enterprise PKI. So now we have successfully checked for ADCS health, but still we want to check for our CRL, AIA and OCSP locations by using a cert util command. Why it is necessary for clients to check CRL locations time to time? The reason behind that is clients need to access the CRL location to check if the certificate is in active condition or has been revoked or expired. And to test that, clients need to verify the location of CRL distribution point. So to test that, I'm going to use a URL retrieval tool. But before we do that, we need to export that certificate. In our case, we have a user certificate. So let's go back to that console. So you can open that console using MMC command. So this is a certificate we are going to use for this demo. Let's right click on the certificate, click on all task and select export. Let's click on next. Here we are not going to export the private key because we are just going for the testing purpose. So let's click on next button. Here we are going to select dot CR format. Let's click on next. It is asking us to specify the location. So I'm going to click on browse button. And already C drive is selected. For this demo, I'm giving the file name admin at mylab. Let's click on save. Let's click on next. And click on finish. Here we are receiving message that the export was successful. Let's click on OK. And that's it. Let's minimize all the consoles. Fine. Let's open File Explorer to verify that we have that certificate on a C drive. This is a certificate which we are talking about. Admin at MyLab. Now let's go to Windows PowerShell Admin. Let's clear the screen. Let's run command cd slash. To open URL retrieval tool console, we need to run command certutil space hyphen URL and then we have to specify the name of that certificate. In our case, the command will be certutil space hyphen URL space the name of certificate which is admin at mylab in our case. Let's run tab key and now let's press enter key. Fine, as you can see, under certificate object, you can verify that selected certificate is administrator. Now, the first thing which I'm going to check for, let's retrieve AIA locations. So select search from AIA and let's click on retrieve. Fine, under status, you can see verified. This is the first path using LDAP and the second one is using HTTP, that is www.mylab.local. We're going to check same for CDP. So let's select CRLs and click on retrieve. As you can see, all are verified B CRLs and Delta CRLs. Now I'm going to check for OCSP. In the last video demonstration, we have successfully set up OCSP as well. So let's select OCSP from AIA and let's click on retrieve. Now here you can see the status is verified. So after seeing this, we can see everything is working fine for us in our two-tier PKI environment. We also want to verify what happened if we revoke the certificate. To test that, I'm going to revoke this administrator certificate from our CA console. So I'm going to close this. Let's go to Cert SRV console. Let's click on Issue Certificates. And this is the certificate, mylab slash administrator. And as you can see, certificate template is user. See, before you revoke the certificate, uh, you have to check for the serial number as well. So let's uh, get the serial number. Fine. Let's go to that MMC console. Let's double click on this certificate. Let's click on details. 
and let's find out the serial number. Fine. So this is a certificate which we need to revoke for the testing purpose. Let's close this console. Let's select the certificate. Right click on it. All tasks and select a revoke certificate. Again, we are going to use unspecified as a recent code. Let's click on yes. Fine. Let's click on revoke certificates. And here you can see the certificate is there. Let's again go back to the Windows PowerShell. Because already we have revoked the certificate. Let's again run the same command cert util space hyphen url space name of our certificate which is admin at mylab.cer. Let's press enter key. Let's click on OCSP and let's click on retrieve. Still you can see status is verified. Now why it is not showing the status of revoked? Because of revocation list is still in the client's cache and that's the reason that why it is still showing us verified. So I'm going to close this and let's delete all client cache. For that we need to run command cert util hyphen url cache. Let's simply run this command. And here you can see this is the list of cache which we have on a computer. So we're going to delete all the cache. And for that the command will be cert util space hyphen url cache space asterisk to delete everything. And then we need to specify delete. Let's press enter key. Fine. Let's again run command cert util hyphen url catch to verify that. And now you can see that command is completed successfully, but we are not seeing anything here. I'm going to clear the screen. One more thing which we are going to do is let's manually generate certificate revocation list. Let's go to cert SRV console. Let's right click here. Let's go for all tasks. And click on publish. Let's select new CRL. Let's click on OK. Let's wait for a few seconds and we hope that our CA has successfully generated that new certificate revocation list. Let's again go to the Windows PowerShell. Let's again run that command cert util hyphen URL and that a certificate name. Let's again select OCSV and let's click on retrieve. Now still you can see we are receiving the status verified. Now why? Again, one more reason is there in a the background. Because our OCSP server did not refresh its database with the newest revocation list. See, we have manually generated the list, but OCSP server doesn't have that updated list. So again, I'm going to close this. And again, we have to delete the catch. Fine, let's run command cert util space url catch asterisk delete. Fine. Now let's go to OCSP management console. First I'm going to click on array configuration. Let's right click here and select refresh revocation data. Fine. Let's wait for walking message and the green checkbox. Now let's go back to Windows PowerShell. Let's again run the command cert util space url space name of that certificate. Let's press enter key. Let's again select OCSP and let's click on retrieve. Now this time, as you can see, under status, we are able to see revoked. So finally, this time, this URL retrieval tool is giving us the correct information. What if we check for CRLs? So let's select a CRL and click on retrieve. Here, if you click on under OCSP and if you click on retrieve, it is telling us that it is a revoked certificate. But if you click on CRLs and if you click on retrieve, it is telling us that status is verified. Let me be clear about one thing that when we check certificate against CDFA extension, cert util hyphen URL command do not check for revocation status, just indicates whether CRL is reachable or not. So for EIA, if we click on retrieve, again you can see verified. For CRL, it is also showing us verified, but only in OCSP it is going to show you that revoke status because this AIA and CTP is going to tell you the status of CRL reachability. Fine. So from OCSP we can confirm that our certificate is revoked. Our OCSP revocation server is also working fine. And this is the way how we can check for the health of any certificate which is issued by your certification authority. And this video series Till now, we have seen the steps 
to install and configure standalone root CA, enterprise subordinate CA, and online responder service to deploy two tier public key infrastructure using Windows Server 2019. And we have also checked the health status of our public key infrastructure in this video demonstration. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching this video series.